yeah baby guess what lords of thunder world champion back here with another video junk yeah it's cool to see the angry video game nerd back in action i think he's done his movie you know but not done editing so hey that would be cool <laughs> you know to see what the nerd is up to over at com bravo and yes i'm gonna be at com bravo from july the 27th to july the 29th so if you're up in the area, Burlington, Ontario, I'm going to be there. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be there as a guest. You know, go around talking to people, sitting down in the chairs and all that. <laughs> but anyways, back on topic here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to copy my Mate series of the top 10 most obscure games for TurboGrafx 16. Now, <laughs> I know he's not going to do a TurboGrafx 16 list because well, there's only like a few of us out there that actually own the system, but Maybe here's 10 games that sort of slipped under the radar for you. Okay, let's pick out 10 and see if you agree or disagree or not. <laughs> okay, so let's start with this one. Or Dying for to rest its team. Now, I know a lot of people have mixed opinions on it, say it's a pretty average shooter, but a reason why this one is so obscure, i never seen this one personally in the arcades. You know, I think it was on the PlayStation Natco Museum C edition. But other than that, <laughs> it's pretty obscure for shooting the game. And even though this was the first year of release for TurboGrafx 16, you can tell by the orange letter and all. <laughs> a lot of people haven't heard of it before, it's not well known. You also have to worry about the different unique stages as well as the enemies. You can also do a little bit of shop and run. Hey, you can earn some crystals from some enemies, pick it up, buy some stuff, get more powerful. Yeah! And hey, you can get your friend to join in too. Not a lot of Turbo Asset Scene shooters will do that. It's a mostly one player action, but here it's two players at once. Yeah. So I say give her a shot. You just might like what you find. And since it was the first year Turbo Asset Scene release, I bet it would be pretty cheap too. Okay. Uh, speaking of a cheap game that you might find easily, yeah, I got big list Tactical Gladiator here. <laughs> okay, so say you played this before on your emulator and all that, you're probably not gonna get what the big deal is. Okay, you're this giant robot and you're skiing across the ground. <laughs> it's not gonna make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> it looks like a giant popsicle stick on your tats, dude. Okay, on the surface, it's going to seem like a terrible game with above average music and graphics. But if you give it a chance, you understand how to play it. You see the little radar on the bottom. You see where the enemies are coming from. You won't be too surprised when your big robot target gets hit by an enemy. Now, the cool thing about Vigo's Tactical Gladiator is that it's kind of like an RPG. The more you shoot down, the more weapon energy you can gain at the end of a stage. Yeah, it's a cool RPG factor which makes the game interesting. And yes, it's challenging. You get no continues, <laughs> no extra lives. You're dead once. You go all the way back to the beginning unless you know cheat codes and all that. But it is beatable. You just have to get good enough at those 10 various stages. They give it a chance. You might be in for a game you never played before in your life and you just might like it. Vigo has a gold glider for TurboGrafx 16. Weird name, terrible artwork, kind of fun if you get the gist of it. Okay. And here we got one well, working designs, first ever games for TurboGrafx 16. Ah, we got Cosmic Fantasy 2. Look at that horrible artwork. <laughs> I bet the Japanese one was way better, but hey, at least the uh, Japanese gameplay is still attacked here. Yep, you got some cool artwork. A lot of intense RPG battles, you know, it harkens back to the day of Dragon Warrior where you have to do a lot of grinding and all. But hey, I don't mind that too much. You have to try to save your girl from bad space pirates and all. And you get to meet a whole bunch of other interesting characters too, like air hot girls, a cat, some other ladies always getting tied up in bondage and holy shit, but <laughs> amazing enough they kept it in the game. A lot of the air adult stuff actually stayed in here. I got a new review of this one soon. But it's a long game and there's a lot to cover. 
Uh, speaking of classic roleplay and action, here I got Order of the Griffin. Now, there are a lot of bugs in the game. When you go into a battle or something, you hit something. <laughs> the music actually quits out on you. and There are some problems with level grinding, and I hate, hate the 3D dungeons in this game. Very tough to navigate through, but hey, if you give it a chance, level up your characters, understand what the best spells are, it can be a whole hell of a lot of fun. The game gives you a lot to customize, so there's a lot of level of depth that you'll get in here that you won't see in other RPGs. Order yours today! <laughs> yeah, good luck finding this one in the wild though, especially with the bots. <laughs> I got lucky. Yeah, Tom Cruise. Not Tom Cruise, but Tom Cruise. When I did that goofy review years ago, I was pretending to be Tom Cruise and gave it like a 55 out of 100. I was thinking maybe I was a bit too hard in the game because, yeah, just like the other games for the Turbo Acid scene that are pinball, Devil's Crush, and Ellen's Crush, the physics and controls are just great in this game as well. And the 10 different bone stages you find in this game are actually a bit more interactive than the ones in those previous games. So there's a lot to work with here, especially with a huge pinball table that would be nearly impossible to do on an actual physical pinball table. <laughs> it may be obscure, but I don't think it's too expensive yet. Sadly, I think these Nets 5 games are going to be very hard to find in a while. It's still a Turbo Duel game, very obscure, and it's not too bad either, believe it or not. It's actually made by the same people who did the E series. Yeah, and this one has some cool anime cutscenes in it that actually make it stand out <laughs> better than a normal Turbo CD game would. Despite some crappy graphics here and there, I say give it a chance. Very fun. Yeah, here's another weird Japanese game. <laughs> I know Tinkerbell, you know, she was pretty hot too back in the old Disney cartoons, but holy fuck. This girl wears nuts enough in here. Oh, I guess that's not complaining all that. <laughs> Who is this real geared for, you know, little girls or, you know, perverts like me? But anyways, if you look past all that, it's still a very fun shoot em up. You got lots of cool power ups to use. Ones that you can charge up, ones you can just shoot normally, a cool RPG system. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a tough game. Cotton doesn't do too much new, but it's still a hell of a lot of fun. Well, we're tracking down. Especially if you love your shoe nuts in. And on the Turbo Graph 16, you're definitely going to get a lot of that there. <laughs> uh, speaking of shoe matching, we got Sid Mead's Terraforming. Oh. <laughs> Okay, I know there's a lot of mixed opinions out there. A lot of people say that this wasn't really a cool jump up, you know, from a Turbo CD to a Super CD format. The graphics repeat a lot. The enemies get way too repetitive sometimes. But, and I don't care because there's always tons of enemies on screen at once. There's always tons to shoot at. The game barely gives you any breathing room, and you always have to be constantly on your toes. <laughs> be careful with the parachute and uh, donuts. <laughs> Not to mention, you also get some pretty good graphics and music here and there too, and it gets me really pumped to shoot down shit. Sit meet Sarah Foreman. <laughs> you won't find it too easily, but if you do, you might be surprised how good it is. Okay, I talked about Con there and how very difficult that one is to find. A well, good luck find this one. It's the rarest domestic to rest scene game out there. Magical Chase. Oh, I hate even showing it because, yeah, I got the game and a lot of people are looking for it. And, yeah, it's going for scary prices now, like 700 to 2000 now, when it's up on eBay. <laughs> yeah, I just looked on eBay right now and I don't see it. Shit. So here we go again, but if you actually play it, you realize the game is actually pretty good. Crap. <laughs> and I think that's why a lot of people want to get this one, is because it's so unique. Lots of cool weapons you can buy in the shop, 
it has an interesting health bar in it so you don't die in one hit you only got one life unless it continues but still it's an interesting challenge all you have to do is get a few thousand dollars saved up and maybe you can get this game too when it shows up on ebay or whatever <laughs> or who knows you might get lucky some old lady will sell in the shop for five cents yeah i'll take that right now <laughs> yeah good freaking luck okay so what's the number one most obscure but cool game for turbo 16 it's none other than beyond shadow game you probably all thought magical chase was going to be number one but no i wanted to give this spotlight to something i think is very underrated as well now i know a lot of people are saying oh i hated that sequel on nintendo 64 it was so boring man but i love the nes original why did they make the sequel on the N64 so bad? Well, technically that was Shadowgate 3. Because this is the real Shadowgate 2, beyond Shadowgate. And if you actually play it, <laughs> you'll be surprised how good it is. It doesn't use the same, you know, clunky inventory system. No, you actually get to control a physical character in third person. And you get to collect different items. Yeah, the artwork and storylines are very impressive for a Turbo CD game. Great music, great sound effects, cool gameplay. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know it exists. It might be a few hundred, it might be for a <laughs> Skier TurboGrafx 16 Turbo Dual System. Once it's all said and done, you might be surprised just how good the game is. Alright, and that's my top 10 list of most obscure games for TurboGrafx 16 that you might actually like. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of bad ones and all. Like, I still don't recommend ones like Ghost Manor, which ironically enough was made by the same development team as Beyond Shadowgate. Hey, this is just a spotlight, some obscure TurboGrafx 16 gems that I don't think get the attention that they deserved. And, I don't know, maybe you might want to check them out now. Load up them emulators or check on eBay, see what you can find. Or maybe if you got the game, hey, pop it in and have a go at it. You just might be surprised how good the games actually are. Alright, and that's it for me. Star Soldier, over and out. Hey, it's beyond awesome. I don't know. <laughs>